Hey, do you ever wonder how often divine timing plays a role in your life? Maybe you think it always plays a role. Maybe you think it never plays a role. We're going to be talking about divine timing today. And I want to know, do you feel like you have the awareness to notice when it's not divine timing in your life? And what do you do when you feel like you're out of alignment with divine timing? We all know that divine timing is magical when, it, when everything aligns and it happens for us. So what are the components of divine timing? How do we get more of it? How do we make it work for us? That's what we're going to be talking about on today's episode of The Akashic Show. I'm so glad you guys are here joining us today. And I'm so glad to be sitting next to my friend and partner here at The Akashic Academy, Coach Nick. Coach Nick, I have had such an amazing journey hanging out with you. When my memory roll comes up and I realize that we're like developing a nice long history of being friends, it's it's really cool. And I know that divine timing played a big part in our relationship and our coming together, our partnership here at the Akashic Academy, because it wasn't an instantaneous thing. There was a process and there was some patience that um, was required. And I know that you're going to talk a lot about that today when we dump, jump into the topic of divine timing. But thank you so much for joining me here and uh, joining all of us here, sharing your wisdom and knowledge, not only from your experience in life, but from the Vedic knowledge, the bhakti, bhakti yoga, which is your area of specialty. And I feel like it adds so much to um, really understanding the new age ideas. And we call them new age, but it's really very ancient wisdom. But when we talk about ancient wisdom, a lot of it really seems to be rooted in the knowledge that you share. So it's fun to have that perspective and such an honor to share these moments with you and everybody out here. Welcome, Coach Nick. Hey, thank you so much, Emily. And uh, uh, likewise, I know uh, we've been uh, hanging out for a, a few years now. And uh, yeah, and our relationship has actually taken different forms yeah. as the material world tends to do, right? You know, it, it started off, I think you were a guest on the Hangout with Coach Nick show. And that's how we connected. I think you reached out to me or something, or I reached out to you, one or the other. And, uh, and uh, we started that by doing the Hangout with Coach Nick show, which was a lot of fun. And then from there, um, you know, we've had tons of conversation, realized we had a lot in alignment and a lot to learn from each other. Yeah. And absolutely, like one of the things is, yeah, so I, you know, I'm a, uh, what's known in the Western world as a Hare Krishna, right? And, uh, you know, this is a Vaishnava or Bhakti Yoga. Uh, and uh, so, and I saw a lot of new age stuff or what we call new age, but uh, a lot of the ideas that people are exploring today and think that, oh, it's new age or this is new ideas, it's actually very old ideas, uh, very, very old, thousands and thousands of years old. And much of it is rooted in the ancient Vedic texts. Uh, much of it is rooted in the uh, coming from the Sanskrit language, which the word Akashic is a Sanskrit word. The word yoga is a Sanskrit word. So even many of the words that people are using today, uh, sometimes they don't know that the root of it all actually comes from uh, the Vedic texts and knowledge. And you've got an incredible base of knowledge in the Akashic records, teaching people how to read their records, to learn how to, uh, to use the Akashic records in our everyday lives to, to really get answers, get clarity, get insight into our own life and to understand divine timing as as all part of that so thank you so much for sharing your energy and and the knowledge of the akashic records which i'm going through uh learning the, that process myself so i'm in, enjoying that as well i'm actually at the point of the course where i have to open up my akashic records for the first time and so that's my plan for this gonna go. <laughs> now that you said that you're gonna have to report back on what you experience when you do that Sounds because good. there is um, a very powerful like shifting in your energy, in your brain waves, in physiologically what's going on inside of your body. And we're all at like various stages of sensitivity when it comes to learning to tune into these subtle energies. So I'm interested and I'm sure everybody out here now that I've put you on the spot uh, is going to be interested too to know how how it goes for you and what you feel. As Sounds you good. are uh, moving through that, Tom. Tom is in the house today. Tom uh, says, "Watch out for the dust opening on those records." <laughs> uh, we had another funny comment here too. I'm glad you're here today. You're going to hold some space for uh, comic relief, which we always love on this show. Kathy Hoymeyer had uh, another good comment here too. Sometimes I wonder why I feel like I am procrastinating getting to a client in a day or even hours will go by and I will get that info that I need to help them. So now somehow I trust. 
all about divine timing, which uh, thank you guys for sharing your experiences. Please share more. Um, and we'll check in with those comments as we get to our topic today. But we got to have a little fun before we get to our topic today because we like to have some fun around here. So Coach Nick and I, of course, do a rock and puppet show for you guys <laughs> every single week here. Um, we like to get you guys involved. We like to give shout outs to our audience. And this is our fun way of doing it. We also tune into other aspects of ourselves while we're sitting here coloring, don't you? Don't you find oh, yeah, totally. open up different parts of your brain? I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So this has been a, a brilliant way that Coach Nick and I have decided to not only stimulate ourselves, but also laugh a little bit with you guys and give some shout outs. So Coach Nick, your favorite comment from last week. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Boom. All right, uh, Julio Cantu, you have been puppetized. Your comment was, uh, can we create those intentions with, or we can create those intentions with our thoughts, or it's like if we dial, and I can't see the rest of the, hold on, let me say, I can't see the rest of the comment. No, let, let me read it now. Can we create those intentions with our thoughts, or is it like if we dial and we are waiting to receive it like you mentioned. Now, last week we talked all about the active part of receiving. So what does it mean to receive? Receive abundance, receive you know, messages. How, what, is, what does it really mean to receive? And what is the active part of receiving? And uh, Julio uh, left a, uh, excuse me, Julio left a, a nice comment there, uh, you know, just talking about intention and, uh, and waiting to receive, as you mentioned. And uh, so thanks so much for connecting in and uh, tuning in. You've been puppetized, my friend. <laughs> All right, the next member of our amazing audience out there, which by the way, you guys, share this out real fast. Share this, like this, heart it up, say hello if you haven't commented yet, because as you interact more, Facebook will put this in more people's news feeds. And what we're talking about today, divine timing, is just spreading the light, spreading the wisdom, spreading the perspective. So uh, let's grow our audience a little bit here. And for our second puppetized member of our crew today, Karen Sherman. Karen, which you will nice. see exactly why. I'm sorry, Brenda. Brenda Sherman. Take two. Okay. Brenda Sherman. <laughs> sorry, Brenda. But I hope you feel very honored because your comment actually inspired the entire topic for today. You said, thank you. Absolutely divine timing. And you were talking about uh, the topic that we were talking about last week. And divine timing is so powerful. When you hear just the right piece of information, when you are open and receptive to receiving what is coming in for you, that is divine timing. And that has the aspect to shift a lot of things very, very quickly in your life. So I thought that this was a really, really valuable topic to talk about. So uh, thank you, Brenda Sherman, and also your counterpart, Karen. I don't know who she is out there somewhere. <laughs> Well, what, what, another aspect of you coming in here, um, but I'm really excited to get to know you more and thank you for being open and allowing Nick and I to come through and uh, be of service in divine timing for you. That feels, it feels good to be of service in that way. That's really what the mission about the Akashic, that the Akashic Academy is all about, is to be of service to the planet during this time of awakening. And we do that in a lot of different ways. So Coach Nick, let me turn it over to you real fast. Why don't you share a little bit of Academy news that's going on, and then we'll dive right in. Yeah, sure. Uh, fantastic. So of course, like you said, our, our, our service uh, to the world is to help people make spirituality a priority. I mean, that's really our overall message, and that's what we're setting up in the Academy so that you have different ways that you can truly make spirituality a priority. And uh, from my own life experience, when we make spirituality a priority, this is the essence of life. Then everything else, you know, everything else springs from that. So it's like watering the root of a plant. When you water the root of a plant, then the whole plant flourishes. So in the same way, when we water our spirituality and we really give to it, then so does our material life, you know, our finances and our health and our relationships and some of the material aspects that we want in life, it really gets to flourish. So the, one of the ways that we're doing that is uh, you get to meet us in person. We get to go out and, and myself and Emily, we go into the community, we speak, we visit different groups. Uh, so Emily's going to be in Truckee, California That's right. on uh, June 16th. 
and she's going to be doing an intuitive development workshop. So if you are within the Truckee, California area, or you can make the drive there or fly there, then uh, go ahead and do that. And you can reach out to Emily to learn more about the details. But June 16th, Emily's going to be in Truckee, California, doing an intuitive development workshop. I will be in St. John, uh, New Brunswick, which is in Canada, on the east coast of Canada, on June 13th. And I'll be doing a workshop in St. John, New Brunswick, in Canada, uh, all about bhakti yoga. Um, I'll be sharing a little bit of, I was asked to come in, share a bit of my story. And we'll be sharing lessons along my own story to help you understand why bhakti yoga is actually the essence of spirituality and all spiritual practices stir from bhakti, devotion, getting and yoga, union, coming in contact with uh, the divine, right? So yoga means union. So I'm going to be giving that workshop June 13th. If you want to learn more about the workshop and the location and all that good stuff, then uh, you know, send us a message here on the, uh, on the Academy page or leave a comment below if you are on the East Coast uh, and want to come and hang out with me for an evening. That'd be wonderful. All right. Second way that we're doing this is online. Now, I've got a uh, for all you healers out there that want to be able to grow your business and really get good at the sales process, because to really make an impact in this world, you got to be able to sell. Even if you're doing this non for profit, even if you're doing this for no money, selling all selling means is to influence to be able to get people to understand why, what value you bring to the table. So if you want to really get good at your sales process as a healer, then join me for the five-day sales challenge for coaches and healers. We start this Monday, so June 4th, we're going to get started. It's, in a, it's happening inside of a secret Facebook group. There's going to be five training videos, bonuses, and over $1,300 worth of prizes that we're going to be giving away and access to different programs and such. So if you want to learn more about that, say, hey, Nick, tell me more about your challenge, and, uh, and I'll send you the link, and I'll send you a message as well. Thirdly, come hang out with us every week inside of the Akashic Academy. That would be awesome. Both myself and Emily do workshops inside of our Akashic Academy community. Guys, it's $11.11 .11 to officially join the Academy and get access to eight workshops every week, plus new moon and full moon ceremonies. So come hang out with us every single week. We're making this a formal invite for you to join the Akashic Academy. Uh, Emily teaches uh, different intuitive development uh, skills and is channeling from the Galactic Federation of Light. Wonderful messages for everybody coming through there as part of the Academy. And uh, every single Monday, I teach a mindful living classes to help you become more present in your life and really bring the essence of, of, of yoga through in your every single, uh, in your everyday life. Uh, even if you can't tune in live, they are recorded, so you're able to access those classes long after the recording's done. I think that's it for Academy News, Emily. Let's get into today's subject, which is all about divine timing. Why don't you uh, give us your thoughts on what is divine timing and how does it play out in our everyday lives? Yeah, I think that's a great place to start because as uh, Brenda, shared she was experiencing a moment of divine timing and so many times we think of divine timing as not every single moment that's happening in our life but it's that one moment where everything lines up and we're very open and we can receive and that is a true aspect of divine timing we do tend to recognize divine timing um, when it's bigger moments like that in our life. So let's start there and kind of look at what aspects of ourself are really coming into alignment there that create that space for us to observe divine timing. Because here's the, here's the kicker. The truth is every single moment is divine timing. We just don't necessarily have the ability to recognize it. But let's take a look at those big moments that we can recognize, that we do feel when we feel kind of like that we got struck by uh, that divine energetic lightning and all of our senses come into alignment. Generally, what's going on is that we are seeking in some way. And because we're seeking, we tend to be more open and receptive naturally in that state. Did you know that the, the, the second you ask a question in your mind, your brain begins to seek the answer? So naturally, it becomes really important what questions you ask, which is one of the important things to recognize when you're using the Akashic Records, because it's a question and answer based system. Right. So if you're going to get an answer to a specific question, you better make sure that the question that you're asking is the is what you really want the answer to. But if you are seeking, you are naturally putting yourself in that open and receptive state. Generally, 
we, we've become emotionally vulnerable as well. We've become exhausted at being very uh, hard and very <clears throat> determined. Basically, we're hitting a point of surrender in our emotions, in our thoughts, and in our willingness to see new possibility. Okay, that is what we are experiencing that opens us to divine timing. When we can become aware that we are actually, whether we recognize it or not, in that state of being open and receptive and um, ready to shift and to trust in every single moment, that's when you really start harnessing a lot of power in your life. But it's important to start looking at, like I said, the dynamics of the moments that we do recognize, because this is so often how it is in our life. Things are happening subtly and we don't recognize them. It takes a big event to get our attention. But when we can learn to fine tune that subtle level of awareness, we can learn to hold a steadier pattern of our own energy and we can grow in a more gentle manner as opposed to having to experience the the blow up situation that causes us to be in that state where we've exhausted ourselves we're emotionally vulnerable we're seeking we're open um so i think divine timing plays a powerful role in our life in every single moment and i don't think it necessarily has to be defined as good or bad and we talked about that as well so many times we think of divine timing as Oh, that amazing, great thing that happened. But it also can be that shitty thing that happened to you as well. So, Coach Nick, what are your thoughts in terms of that dynamic of divine timing being positive or negative from our standpoint? Yeah. Um, I always remember that the spiritual journey is about uh, trans. Uh, transcending the dualities of the world. So here on the material plane, we experience, you know, hot and cold, up and down, right and wrong. You know, we experience dualities. But in actuality, the reality is that it's just oneness. Even the word universe, right? Uni means one and verse means rhythm or song. So one rhythm or one song, right? One, one vibrational frequency or one, one uh, uh, frequency plane. So ultimately, any duality that you're experiencing is from the material perception, your job on the spiritual journey, all of our jobs is to become fully spiritual, to leave the material consciousness and enter into spiritual consciousness, uh, which means to enter into full oneness, to, to become in union. That's yoga. And um, so uh, everything is divine timing. Right. And when we can start to see the divine timing in everything, you know, all the good stuff that you may be experiencing or whatever you're deeming as good as you're perceiving as good, then that's divine timing. And that's often one, the easy one to accept. Oh, that was so divine. Right. You know, oh, that meeting was so divine. That information is so divine. But so is all the stuff that you're perceiving to be negative as well. That is also divine. That is also for your betterment and upliftment, because if you actually didn't experience the negative side, you wouldn't be able to experience what is duality. And if you don't experience what is duality, you wouldn't seek oneness. Mm -hmm. So you got to actually here on the material plane challenge is part of it. So that is part of the dynamic of the divine timing is seeing all of your challenges as divine. Then transcend that even further and just see every moment as Mem Emily mentioned as divine. This is divine right now. What, this is now. Right now is happening. You're watching this right now. It has been arranged through your karma to be here. So if you really start to understand karma, uh, then you'll really start to understand that everything you're experiencing is due to your past actions and reactions. So in that case, everything you're experiencing is is arranged by the divine timing so that you can meet your own karma. Meet your At, at all times, you are essentially meeting your own karma or your own manifestations. So when you're meeting something that you're perceiving as good, you're meeting the, the, the what you perceive as a good thing. And every time that you meet something that is what you perceive as bad, you're meeting yourself in that form. So you're always just meeting yourself in every moment. So in this way, every moment is divine. Every moment has the opportunity to teach you. And if you really become um, conscious, present, very present in your life, you'll see that the, the divinity Whatever you know the name of the divinity by, the divinity is always speaking to you in the moment. Always. 
And so every moment becomes a very sweet rasa. Rasa means dance or relationship. A rasa is a relationship. So every moment is a very sweet relationship with the divine if you remember so. So our job is to always remember the divine in the moment and therefore we see the divine timing in everything. And I find that this practice of becoming aware and seeking this divine, divine nature in every single moment is a whole lot easier when your energy is primed and aligned and ready and flowing. Because so many times we let stress take over our life. We let, you know, we, we're, we're, as a society, we're still functioning on making that shift in every moment. We're still functioning on becoming mature enough, which Nick and I were talking about maturity before uh, we, before I hit go on this uh, broadcast. And we were talking, defining, like, what is maturity? What is immaturity? And we both came to the conclusion that the basics of immaturity is not being able to control your emotions. That's and true. what happens when you become mature and you gain the ability to control your emotions, then your emotions aren't ruling and, and causing you to have a response. Then you create space so that you can witness Instead of just riding the bus of your life around, you can witness your life unfolding in every single moment. Wayne Dyer uh, said it so beautifully, and I hope that in these moments I get it close enough to write. He said, I meditate each day to more deeply realize the awareness of the divine energy that guides my life. And that's why the meditation, oh, I just got chills. That's why the meditation practice is so important, you guys, because it creates that space for maturity. It creates that space for awareness. And right now for the activation that I want to do with you guys, I just want to go through, and we're going to do a little bit of a, a pineal gland activation. That's the third eye. Because talking about maturity, we generally think of our own personal human experience through maturity from babyhood all the way up into adulthood. There's really something interesting that happens to our bodies as we go through that process to the third eye. And that is it begins to calcify. It begins to close down. We're born with an open intuitive gift naturally. And when our attunement and our third eye energy is open and can feel that connection and receive that connection to spirit, we naturally stay in those moments of awe, those moments of divine recognition of how our life is unfolding in every moment. But as we grow and mature, what happens because of all kinds of many different reasons, because of your environment, because of toxins you're taking in through your food, because of thought processes, because of areas where we enslave ourselves as a society, because of just simply not using our intuitive gifts and skills and abilities and things that is a little too tricky, the pineal gland begins to calcify. And so we're not getting the level of maturity spiritually that we could have at this moment if we did a little bit of energy work and cleared out some of some of that residue around the third eye so that we can uh, have a, a, a more clear connection. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a little third eye activation. We're going to go into the quantum state and uh, or a meditative state and do a little bit of work here. But here's what I also want to share with you guys. It's just a very physical, quick exercise that you can do. Nick, you ready to do it with me? I'm I ready. Like, like your finger. Put it up on your third eye. And you instantly can feel the coolness, the tingling sensation, right? And your awareness instantly goes to that area. And what do we know from the cosmic laws of the universe? That is, wherever our attention goes, the energy flows. So just simply by doing that a couple times a day and just giving yourself a moment to tune in to that awareness. And go ahead and do that right now if you haven't. Allow that to begin to set your energy frequency into a meditative state. Allow it to take you inward. And bring your awareness to your third eye. Make sure that you're breathing while we're doing this. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes if you're not driving. And just really allow your breath to take you inward. 
If you can still feel that sensation, that cool sensation on your skin, just allow it to take you inward and intend to go into that very quantum level of you, yourself where you have the ability to do all kinds of healing work, shifting, bringing awareness to different aspects of your consciousness and affecting change. Going to that inner part of yourself, accessing that inner healer within yourself. And I want you to bring all of your awareness up to the third eye that's located between the two hemispheres of the brain. And I want you to see in your inner vision an actual eye and I want you to imagine that eye growing and just watch it as it expands using your imagination. Imagination is a powerful tool in creating in the quantum realm. So just seeing the growing energy there. You can also see indigo energy pulsing off of this chakra point, this center, the third eye center the center of your intuition. See that indigo energy radiating 360 degrees all around you. Oops, I just noticed I was holding my breath, so make sure you're not holding your breath. And now if you would like extra assist assistance from your late team, so as Coach Nick shared, I channel messages from the Galactic Federation of Light, which is a team of light beings here to support the mission of ascension on planet Earth at this time. And they're here in the highest good and support, and they're here and available for you. You can think of them as angels, you can think of them as spirit guides, you can think of them as ascended masters. This collective group is all of those things. But you have the option of asking for help in making these adjustments and shifts in your own energy, energy body that allow you to wake up. They allow for the awakening process. So if you would like to call upon your ascended masters or anyone you feel connected to, you can call forward Jesus in this space. You can call forward the Buddha in this space. You can call forward Mother Mary in this space. You can call forward your grandmother in this space whatever resonates with you, and you can ask for assistance. And then just monitor your own energy, putting yourself in the most receptive state possible to receive that assistance and activating the third eye energy. Notice any sensations in your body. Now just setting an intention to integrate. So what we've done is we've added energy frequency to this third eye center. We want to be able to hold that frequency as we go about the rest of our, our lives, our day-to-day, -day, our day-to-day -day habitual patterns. So we want to just set the intention that that energy integrates, meaning it becomes the new baseline resonance within our vibrational field. And we want to set an intention that we can stabilize in that energy. So many times you've heard of ascension symptoms or you know, getting headaches, feeling very tired, maybe feeling dizzy. All of these things can happen when we are integrating new and higher frequencies. In order to be able to stabilize with as much ease as possible, let's just set the intention to also be able to hold this higher frequency of energy within our light bodies with as much ease and, gra ease and grace that is available to us. So be it in slow dance. a nice deep breath in and as you're exhaling, beginning to release the activation. Just bringing your awareness slowly back into your body. Moving around a little bit. And of course, as you're coming back in and as you regain mobility in your fingers to type, share with us how that was for you. How was that for you, Coach Nick? Oh, it was wonderful. Nice and tingly all around. And uh, yeah, just very, uh, 
very inwardly focused, which is uh, which is really nice, very peaceful. You want to know something really funny? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, don't, I don't know if I do. <laughs> Alright, you guys. I was I was driving up the mountain the other day after Lake Tahoe to uh, join, actually to join the kids in the afternoon in the woods for a celebration of learning that was so amazing and fun. But as I was driving up the mountain, I I thought, oh man, I'm having an intense crown chakra activation because the whole back of my head was tingling like crazy. And then instantly I heard my, I don't know, Kashi Grad, whatever was responding to me in that moment say, something's blowing air on your neck. And I reach back and I feel it. And I realize my husband's uh, air coolers in his seat are totally blowing cold air on the back of my neck. And I'm, I was like, whoa, that's palpable. I'm having a powerful activation. And I realized it was the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> well, says that the, the divinity can use anything to help us grow, even our air conditioning units. <laughs> and then I had a good laugh at myself. Um, because it made me laugh. It was funny. All right. It looks like you guys are feeling good out there as well. Thank you guys so much for uh, for uh, hanging out with us. Teresa Warren said, so cool. Mott handed me a lotus from the Nile River. Teresa does an amazing um, astral traveling guide where she takes you to ancient locations where you can receive downloads and you can receive the energy from that location. And ancient Egypt is one of her hot spots as well as uh, ancient Atlantis. So if you guys haven't connected with our community manager, Teresa Warren, please make sure you reach out, send her a message, check out what she's got going on because she's undergone a powerful transformation since learning to read her Akashic records and the space that she's stepping into now to share her gifts and skills and abilities is profound. So I really want to give Teresa a shout out guys, go connect with Teresa Reach out to Coach Nick and I as well. Like I said, we have workshops, private workshops, all week long that you guys can tune into. If you like hanging out here today, if you feel good, if you feel like you had a bit of a shift, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So come hang out with us. I'm going to leave a link inside the comments here of what's going on inside the Akashic Academy and how you can join us inside of that space. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Tune in on Sunday. Sunday's a big day. We've got spirit sessions, which that's Teresa Warren show. Teresa Warren, Rhonda Elliott, and Bex Marie come to you with spirit sessions, a view of the light every Sunday morning, followed by Kathy Hoymeyer, who talks about nourishing our multidimensional bodies. And then later on in the evening on Sunday, Janelle Cameron gives us the Ascension Energy Report. So it's a great day to tune in, hang out, get some knowledge, some support, some information. So we'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye.